sure I'm recording. Yes, that way I don't have to download the whole goddamn VOD again. Okay, so we literally, I have no idea what's going on. We just walked up here and there are fallen knights everywhere, apparently. But chat, tell me, how are you today? How's your day been? How you doing? I thought it was a very fault, well thought out video. I agree personally. The thing it does put a damper on the old world game that we already know how it will end. So, okay, explain to me why does that put a damper on it for you? Like what? Like everything has to end eventually, right? Like everything, even even if they were like, no, 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 it's a separate universe. Like, you know, the old world's not gonna go on till the end times. It's just gonna be about. Um, the Great War Against Chaos, which is why they're starting so far in advance. Oh good, the dogs came back. Area liberated, all right. So we we just, so last time, last uh, session, playthrough, whatever you want to call it, um, we finished the main story. We have finished the main quest. So now we're going to figure out what's going on with the rune right, um, which is the first part of the DLC. And then we're on to the main part of the DLC. To Eric Von Keeden, I shall be brief as the matter is simple. The issue of Kreister Hagen must be resolved in a matter both complete and final. The village that has served as a safe haven for the Imperial Snitch must be burnt to the ground. The surrounding fields sown with salt. Drive the women and children off, hang all the men. M. Well, that's rather... Uh, okay. A little extreme. Now that's the nod. Merchant over here. Yeah, welcome to my workshop. Sturdy craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Uh, let's see. Show me what you have on offer. I hope the characters which are killed get good stories. They should. There's no excuse for them not to get good stories. Like if they're going to die eventually, then you should really be able to like dive into all of that really awesome, like nitty gritty parts of their story. You know what I mean? Because, you know, one of the things that I really was trying to touch on in the video that I don't know if a lot of people like heard is that one of one of my biggest gripes with games workshop uh one of my my biggest issues with them is that gw has such a a history of pulling their punches like they just will not commit to telling a story that has consequences or like the better aspects of drama um because they just they refuse to so often to tell a compelling story that, you know, people die in or there are losses or failures and all these things. And like, we, we like, I don't, I don't know how many books I've read where it just, it feels like a nothing burger. So long. I'm gonna need a lot more money for this DLC. Oh no. I mean, we have plenty of shit to sell. Games Workshop needs to learn from Game of Thrones. Well, I don't know about that. Um, you know, I, I, I do think that, um, I do think that Game of Thrones has a lot of things in its own merit, but I also think Game of Thrones, I think Game of Thrones likes to rely a little too hard on, um, I think he likes to rely a little, I, I think George R.R. R. Martin, especially early on, relied a little too hard on like, oh, look, so-and-so died for like seemingly no reason. Um, and it was kind of like, oh, like that is shocking indeed. Um, but it kind of feels like there should be a little more buildup. <laughs> um, plus, I don't know, Game of Thrones kind of like, I don't know if the books are gonna somehow magically be different, but the show kind of like violated its own laws where when things started getting important and dramatic, everyone just suddenly stopped dying. Um, uh, if I disagree, I feel that's one of the one things 30k does better than fantasy. The universe being so expansive, you can have smaller stories, smaller characters that have actual consequences. See, Fangs, I completely disagree, though. 
because to me those things don't matter like i don't care about those characters i don't care about those small little uh random people who don't have any impact on the narrative like they're just kind of there like yeah i guess you could argue that they um they kind of allow an, an exploration of the setting but i like i'm here for the narrative for the story and all of these characters who are sitting like these little characters that show up in these books basically exist only for the sake of that book they don't actually matter or exist outside of that story they only exist purely within it which to me like Farewell. there are interesting ideas you can explore within that but i don't give a shit about planet what's it called in the 40k universe like i i don't care about 40k at all and i think 40k is forgive me i think 40k is often very trashy because they have all these major narrative events that's a fucking nothing burger and nothing happens the entirety of psychic awakening except for the very end was complete garbage like i don't think anyone could argue that like the only thing that happened in the psychic awakening is what gulliman no gulliman was already awake wasn't he so like the silent king came back but the silent king hasn't done anything since he came back so like none of that mattered like the tyranids attacking ball didn't matter um like god's cool fighting the space wolves didn't matter like all of these they were it was just nothing it was a bunch of nothing like warhammer fantasy has tons of beautiful wonderful novels that have really interesting impactful stories but they're all like many of them are self-contained which is fine um but like that doesn't that's not a strength of the universe because you could do that in any setting it does not matter how big or small your setting is you can always just you can have a setting that's literally just a city just a city with like fifty thousand people and you could tell a virtually infinite number of stories where nothing happens you know you just kind of do the same thing over and over again um or you like you follow people and you're like oh yes these are consequential stories but they're very small consequential stories about like very small intimate things but you're never going to see those people again outside of those stories you're never going to hear about what happened in that story outside of those stories they are self-contained pocket universes essentially which is fine um but i care much more about the big picture what's why what is the big historical things going down uh, which I love about fantasy. I love that fantasy has a timeline that you could follow and trace all these little things. Um, but an important aspect to that is like the geography of fantasy. That's one of the big weaknesses of 40K and Age of Sigmar, in my opinion, is that 40K and Age of Sigmar are so big that nothing matters a lot of the time. You know, they'll talk about certain cities or places and they'll show you maps, but it doesn't mean anything because everything is so big it's just it it's just kind of pointless contract apprentice gone missing good folk my apprentice Volkert has disappeared without trace i'm terribly worried about him so forever finds him and brings him shall receive a size sizable sum of novigard crowns novigrad uh, if you're interested come to my house on the outskirts of oxenford if you lose the way ask passing peasants where the local herbalist has his practice and they shall guide you once again these are just my opinions not saying that anyone's like bad or wrong for thinking differently than I do these are just those are just my thoughts whether yeah yeah a lot of people die in fantasy um which is one of the one of the reasons I really really love it like I love that a lot of the I love that a lot of the characters in fantasy die like there were plenty of playable characters in the Warhammer fantasy army books who were dead characters like they did not exist in the modern timeline uh, because they had died recently or even a long time ago but you could still play as them and learn their stories and adore them um one of the things i really don't like about like kind of the more modern games um is that they tend to almost kind of rely on this idea idea of oh no the only oh geez uh the only characters that are allowed to be playable are characters that are like alive and around good lord I like how that guy's just standing there uh, completely not worried.
Bro, are you, are you seriously just gonna stand there the whole time? Like, not even... Oh, hey, that guy didn't die. I thought for sure that dude died. He literally just kind of like fell down. Whew. Oh, that was interesting. Hidden treasure. Pastoral diary of Father Glad Gladefried. Journals covered in blood, heavily damaged, only the last page could be made out. My wanderings to the fire's glory next took me to preach to Brunwick. Brunwich? Brunwick? The village curled round the lake, and lo and behold, what did the most holy flames illuminate for me there? A hive of hardened heathens too lost in sin to lift a cursed finger to care for the hearth of the eternal fire. Filled with divine wrath, I asked the why is your chapel in such a sorry state? Why is your cemetery all covered in weeds? Their response, ghosts, curses fallen upon hallowed ground. They blame it on the um, uh, elderman's wife, say she went mad from riches and legible fragment. And ever since that tragedy, chapels laying in ruins with no one daring to go near. So the task falls on me to guide these foolish lost sheep back to the righteous path and away from the rubbish they believe. Peasant. I intend to enter the chapel alone, armed with only the torch of the eternal fire to light my path and just see just what lurks within. Well, that seems to have gone very well for him. A storm, damn it. Oh, I'll be fine, Geralt. It's a little rain. But enough on that. Sorry. I don't know why I got in such a ramble. Yeah, I, I, am, ex I am excited to see the Tyranids march out of the Octarius War. I hope 10th edition, uh, or uh, what, what's the event going on right now? Arcs of Omen? I hope Arcs of Omen has some stuff go down. It seems like Arcs of Omen is going to have some stuff go down as like they're introducing like Vashtor and all this other stuff. So like that's promising, but we'll see where it goes. Do I know of the ghost ship encounter in Skellige? Uh, chat has mentioned it. I have not been able to trigger it, uh, but chat has uh, has definitely mentioned it. Okay, so that seems like I need to get down there. I bet this is the crypt. Yep. You're late because you were making cookies. I hope you brought enough for everyone. Edbird's farewell note. I've not left, not a blooming thing. All I can do now is pass on my family's tale of horror and woe, then pass on myself as soon as I've written it all up in this letter. Seems a fated dream now, but there were a time where we were happy. My beautiful wife, Ornesta, and myself. We were married in high style with a fitting feast, and then a year later, our dear Mild Burga was born. Folk praised the Ween's beauty, and said she were taking uh, said she were the spitting image of her mum. Ornesta'd get all cross when they talked like that, but I paid it no heed to the time. Soon enough, our family grew. First Matilda, then Ethel came into the world, both fair as angels. But Ernesta, well, I'll never forget the eve she sat there combing her long chestnut hair while the girls cried and cried. I said to her, love, I reckon the lasses are hungry. And that's when she lashed out at me for the first time. Said they'd no right to be hungry. They'd stolen her beauty and her youth and should be, and that should be more than enough to feed on. I should have known it then. I should have guessed madness had burrowed into my love's head and every compliment paid to her lasses beauty make it burrow ever deeper. Year by year, the youngins grew taller and more lovely, but time's not so kind to the old, and Ernesto weren't spared its cruelty, which took her skin's spring and its sheen of youth. One night, I was awoken by a startling moon, which led all the world in eerie glow. I looked around the hut and saw it was empty. I ran out of the door and saw a set of bare footprints leading to the cemetery by the chapel. Seeing that, my heart jumped into my throat. I found them, all three lying around the fountain. Were I not... Were I not been their father, I'd never recognize them. Deep gashes mutilated their fair faces, strips of skin and hunks of flesh were strewn all about. As I stood beholding this butchery, I had the feeling someone was watching me, and I wasn't weren't mistaken. Ornesta stood there on a stool by a lone tree. She had a rope draped around her neck like some demonic necklace. They took it they took it from me, all of it, all I had, all I cherished, she said, then she jumped. She's dead, my Ernesta, my three daughters dead as well. I'll 
I'll soon join them. I've taken all I have and gave it to the gods. Perhaps they'll forgive me and my beloved Ornesta. Yikes. Oh. Well, you seem like a pretty massively shitty mother. So allow me to do the honors of sending you straight to hell. You're jealous of your daughter's beauty? When is Lordbeard season two coming out? Um, so here, okay, so uh, this is actually, I'm glad you brought that up because this is important. So the TLDR is basically that, oh no. Um, uh, the TLDR is basically that um, I am going to be doing some solo lore beard stuff here very, very soon. Probably this upcoming week. Um, eventually, um, I do believe that uh, Nathan is going to join me. However, um, Nathan has some IRL stuff going on right now that unfortunately there's there's just kind of it's just it's just one of those things I'm not going to get into specific specifics of it it's not my story to tell but he's got some stuff going on that just kind of makes Lord Beards not really a realistic possibility for him right now um so um I uh I'm going to be doing some uh I funny enough well not funny enough but just like through a coincidence due to some other stuff i have some like artwork and stuff that's designed for solo sessions um so i'm gonna do i'm gonna try doing it by myself um i would i will like i will do my best to have like special guests on as often as i can um but uh, it's just gonna be me for a bit for season two so um yeah it'll just be me for a while and uh hopefully we'll get nathan back when we can but he's he's got he's just got a lot of other things going on right now um and it would be super not fair to like ask him to magically be okay to come do everything So for, for the first episode back it's probably just going to be me though I may see if Inticity wants to come um and then once we're kind of like a st oh god look at all these questions oh god look at all these question marks um once uh once we're like back up and running we're gonna try and get a lot of uh new guests am i gonna change the name to lorebeard no i'm not gonna rebrand it hey there hear about the contract Whew. a taker at long last Poverty in everyone's lips, but when you've a job to give, no one's eager. Folk are lazy, that's the truth of it. Stick to the point, if you don't mind. Uh, right, right, right. Sorry for the chatter. I'm anxious, is all. Been so long without any word. <sighs> it's my apprentice, Falkert. I remember his apprentice. I sent him to the dead white wood. You know, the forest near Martin Foy's farmstead. I'd run out of hand fiber, see, and the, the damned stuff grows thick as weeds there. Let me guess. Hasn't returned. Yes. Uh, uh, no, he hasn't. Please, find him and bring him back safe and sound. Anticity is gone MIA since he suddenly said he's leaving Warhammer. Well, I know he's taking a break from Warhammer. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't, like, want to talk about it or anything. Um, I And like I said, I'll reach out to him. Um, there's, there, like, if he doesn't want to do it, that's totally fine. But he's still showing up for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay sessions, so. No promises, but I can certainly look for him. Any distinguishing features? How will I recognize him? Hmm, I've got to think on that. Well, he's a, a halfling, as I am. Uh, light hair, will that do? It'll have to. So long. I honestly forgot halflings were in this universe. Hey there. Do you have any goodies? Let me have. 
I always use alchemy, alchemy goodies. I'll take the mistletoe. I'll take the flowers. I'll take the fruit. Uh, I think that's all I need. Oh, and yeah, I can. Okay, I'm gonna sell him a bunch of stuff I have like way too much of. Chat says we need money, so we're gonna be doing our best to try and sell stuff that we have like lots of. I don't want to keep a lot of stuff, but so long. Uh, Brandon, not yet. Let me get it up and running first, and then we'll then we'll go. All right, where is this? Chorus, good to see you. Welcome to the stream. How you been? Yeah, yeah, there, there's a ton of stuff we could sell. I'm aware. Show me what you got. No hybrids. My favorite. Claws. That's not very nice. Nicholas Vogel's laboratory notebook. I've acquired the eggs. They cost, cost a fortune, left me with barely enough funds to pay the rent for my laboratory. But now I can begin my work in the earnest. I'll soon show those pea-brained admirals of ours that airborne armies are the future of warfare. As such, and, and the first such army will be my creation shall bow, proudly bear the name of the Redonian Air Force. They've hatched, never seen a harpy so tiny, and dare I say cute? They have no bosoms yet, but they but do have enormous heads and equally enormous appetites, bird-like through and through. My first attempts at taming them have brought promising results. The young harpies eat out of our hands and sometimes eat our hands as well. My assistant's already lost two fingers. The Earlman of Hedel came skittering into our tower, desperately bawling about spiders plaguing his village, begging for our help, weeping, weeping for their picked upon livestock and offspring who suffer the most from arachnid, the arachnoids' bites. Hmm. Uh, one swarm of mindless eating machines preying on another. How dare he interrupt my work on the uh, Wunderwaff for such banalities. Instead of the uh, arachnocide he requested, I gave him a bottle of arachnomorph pheromones. 
Won't he be in for a surprise? But do the peasants not say spiders and snakes a happy home make? I'm sure I've heard them say something of the sort. Our funds are nearly exhausted. I shall be forced to take something from the rainy day stash I hid from Hubert at the top floor of the top floor of the tower. The bulk of our outflow goes towards the purchase of, purchase of pork, which the harpies devour in gargantuan quantities. Perhaps if we were to dress one of uh, one up in Redonian armor now and present it at court, the king himself would become our patron. No, no, no. The entire squadron must be present, else Radovid will deem the whole undertaking a farce. It seems our harpies have grown tired of pork. I found the scraps of Hubert's overall. The scraps of Hubert's overalls in one of their cages. No great loss. Hubert had already lost eight fingers feeding them. Couldn't even grip a broom. Catastrophe has struck. Someone opened all the cages and let out the harpies. I'm sure I'll find them wheezing their last in the grass outside the tower. After all, no one has fed them for a week. Wow, he sounds like he was a massive piece of shit. Good riddance to that dude. I'm gonna say this game does not think very highly of uh experimenters i must say i think everyone we've ever met who does experiments is like a massive piece of garbage trying to create like super soldiers or some nonsense Yeah, they definitely ate him up good. Yum yum father. I'm sure he died the way he wanted. Feeding his babies. Do I mean Festus Kugath Ekater Throt? Fair. <laughs> else done come on roach yes happy friday the 13th indeed not something i think people usually like to say but uh it is not Saturday, Spartan Elite. Everyone knows that my clock is the only clock in the world, and everyone else's is a lie. Ooh. Those look like bandits. I guess they're not. Let's track a halfling. Herbalist's cart. Got some blood here. Blood. Dried. A few days old. Well, that does not bode well. What do I think CA should do minor settlements? Um, I should need, I probably need to make a video on that, but I mean, I, I am not a fan of the mi minor settlement rework because it basically made them non-existent. Like they're just pretty much impossible to find now. Like it's very, very rare to come across them, which unfortunately was definitely some of the community's desire. Like there, it's not a secret that the, many of the people that were pushing for the change Trails gone wanted cold. them to just not exist in the to game. Around, ask, maybe someone's seen him. Uh, which I am not a huge fan of because I like variety in my campaigns, and right now there's very little of that. Um, but it's as far as like what they need to do, they need to make up their decision about whether they're going to. They need to make up their decision about whether or not they like actually want them in the game. And if they do, um, do they want to make like notable changes to them? Do they want to like um, heavily redesign them or like make AI tweaks or like what's what's the goal here? 
because frankly my opinion is that if you build any garrison like if you build if you have a tier three settlement or you have a level one garrison building it should be a minor settlement battle from that point forward instead